Welcome to Microsoft Dynamics NAV 2015 Coffee Mug Tutorials. I'm Johannes Goodnesson, founder of Enecta, a Microsoft Gold certified partner. Using a coffee mug as an example, I'll show you how to create items, purchase orders, sales orders, manage inventory, and much more. So go ahead and grab your own cup of joe and let's get started. Hello again and welcome to the coffee mug tutorials. Uh, what I wanted to go through right now is uh, return orders. So uh, one of our customers wants to return one shipment. Um, apparently we had some cracks in the uh, coffee mugs and we're definitely going to take them back. Uh, moreover, we're actually going to send them right away back to the supplier and then get the supplier to send back a replacement and send that back to the customer. So a full turnaround. And you can do that fairly easily in an AV. Um, so what we want to do is go here into sales return orders and create a new one. Uh, let me just close this one here and open this one. So which customer is it? It's the famous Canon group. Now, if you have watched so many of these coffee mug tutorials, uh, I'm going to teach you guys uh, uh, one trick. I've always been clicking here to get the uh, Canon group because I usually write out the names. I can actually set that as the def default filter column. So, like if I were typing this for the first time, it will automatically go on the name and I don't have to click on the column. So, saves one step. Um, I can then go into type. Now the number, it's the same thing. If I type in coffee, I want it to be on the description. Also set that as the default. So next time I don't have to worry about that. Now here is the return reason. We actually have um, return reasons in the system and we can actually create these dynamically. So it could be anything. These are the standard reasons. And we can have them go into a default location depending on the reason. So you could have like a, uh, a warehouse for broke, specifically for broken stuff. Uh, and that inventory could have no valuation when it comes in. So that's a checkbox for that. If I open this up a little bit, you can see that inventory value um, zero is checked off. However, in this case, uh, we're just having to go all the way back and up the chain again. So we're going to say this is defective. And um, actually, rather than bringing in or typing everything in again, what I want to do is get posted document lines to reverse. Now that brings up everything that I've sold to the Canon group. Uh, I can then go ahead and find my shipment. I just go to the last one here and I see I sent them 10 coffee mugs. Those are the ones. And I just hit OK. And that brings over that line. So I don't need to type in a whole new line. I can just delete this one. So I saved another step there. Let's close this. Uh, I still need the return reason. So we're going to go defective. And I have the price and everything automatically brought over. So I didn't have to look that up. Everything is as is. Now, as I'm waiting for the coffee mugs to get sent back to me, I can give the customer uh, the number 1002, which is the RMA number. So the warehouse knows that it's coming in. I can also go ahead and say, create return related documents. Now here, it automatically generates the purchase return order to the vendor, purchase order from the vendor, and another sales order to the customer. So I just have to say which vendor I used. And it happened to be the Custom Metals Incorporation. And OK, they did ceramic as well. And then it goes ahead and creates all of these. So you can see it created purchase return order. 1001 purchase order uh, hundreds well one yeah 
a really big number, and then a sales order 10,002. 106,034. Okay, here I could actually take a look at the return order by hitting cart. Uh, here it is. And it does keep the uh, defective. It did bring in the standard cost or the cost for the coffee mug. Um, and that's ready. And then the sales order, I can take a look at that one again. This is going back out to the Canon group. And back for $30, just like we had sold it for. So we're basically just replacing it all the way through the supply chain. And in order to finish all of this, we would then go ahead and say, OK, quantity to the receive 10. I post that. We receive and invoice that. Now we've given a credit to the customer and received the inventory. And that posts through. And now I go to my purchase uh, return order. Actually, it's build, spelled like like that. Here it is. I can just go ahead and post that. Uh, let's see. Okay, it wants me to give a credit memo number because the vendor has specified that we need authorization number from them. We call them and we get that promptly. Post that. Ship it out to the vendor. Now that's done. And now we go back to the purchase order. And that was 106,000 and something. We really should change the number series here as well. I need to talk to the purchasing department about that. There it is. I also need an authorization there. And I post that one. Now we actually bring in the 10 pieces. And finally, sales order. And that hopefully what came in the new number series. Yes, it did. Sales order number two. And we double click on that. Here it is. And notice that every one of these had a reference to the original invoice shipment number. And then we post, ship an invoice, and everything is done. Now if I take a look at the item, and I go to the coffee mug, obviously this would not happen this fast in the real world. Go to the description, coffee mug standard, go to the entries, ledger entries, and we have some history on this already. And look at the last one here. Uh, open up the document type. You can see we got a sales return receipt coming back, 300. The cost was 51.21. We send it back to the vendor. Now it's out. And we bought it. And then we sold it again. So everything is fine. And that was it.